And finally today, famed scientist Jane Goodall and musician Dave Matthews were in Washington this week to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Goodall's pioneering research and vision for the future. We caught up with the duo and got their take on protecting the environment and the problems with our leaders in power. I think that if we could all follow in the footsteps and listen, listen carefully uh, uh, to what uh, Dr. Goodall says, I think this planet has a far better chance of surviving and, uh, and being a good home for all of us and the rest of the creatures on it. This day, uh, with Dave and his concert this evening, is something we talked about. Not the first time. The first time we met was live earth. Yeah, Al Gore's live earth. It was terrifying for me. Although not for you. You played before audiences that big in your concerts. But I have never spoken to a, a whole huge amphitheater, whatever you want to call it. 60,000 people. people. It was terrifying. You were fantastic. Our program for youth, Roots and Shoots, is now in 120 countries. We have about 15,000 active groups. They are composed of preschoolers right through university, more and more adults forming groups. Um, let's see, about 15,000 active groups, and a group can be a whole school. And every group is choosing three projects to make this world a better place. One to help people, one to help animals, one to help the environment, with a theme of let's learn to live in peace and harmony between each other and between us and nature. I think we need to think about the spaces that are being destroyed. And we need to think about the fact that natural salmon are being wiped out. We need to think about the fact that the chimpanzees are really on a, on a right now on a collision course with, with extinction. You know? And we need to think about our oceans. We need to think about our wild spaces all over the planet, because everywhere it's one. They, the, the natural world doesn't care about, about us, you know, it, it just wants to balance itself. And if we make it impossible to balance, then it will shake us off and shake itself apart with, with, without thought, with great indifference. And no God will drop out of the sky and save us, because why would God, even if God was watching, come and save We're us? He's destroying his creation, why would he bother? Yeah, what, what's the point? I'm going to go make something else wonderful, <laughs> or not exist, or whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm uh, uh, consistently disappointed by our leaders, um, the ones I root for and the ones that I root against, I think, are consistently self-focused and much more than I'd like it to be the case uh, in the hands and at the whim of big money and corporations. and. You know, maybe the, some are more eloquent or speak a language more similar to mine about how the world should be, but generally I, I can say, almost without exception, politicians are a disappointment because they have, unfortunately, they have a fear of the consequences of them speaking strong, true words against what the established power would like them to say. Um, if you think of someone like FDR, getting up and saying, I don't care what the banks think, I don't care what big money thinks, I'm glad that they hate me. Imagine if we had a leader that would stand up and say that, I don't care what they say, we have to change the way we deal with the world. And that's what we need to do. So to become a politician, it, well, first of all, I have a closet so full of skeletons that I'd hate to have that sort of, that sort of exposure to the public uh, and have to answer for it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind answering for it, not as a politician, but as a politician. I mean, I, I don't know, there's nothing I can think of that's worse. But I think uh, uh, to uh, corner our politicians into uh, facing the truth is something that we can do uh, without having to become one very hard for a politician whose job is being a politician and who needs to be re-elected to support his family, to stand up for something he knows in his gut is right if he doesn't have 50% or more of his constituents behind him. Same. Saying, go, 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 we love you, we support you. So Kennedy had the love of the people, so he could say to hell with the banks and so forth. So we need more politicians to have the, the, the courage, as you put it, uh, because they know that they have people behind them who will support them, whatever they say. Then they can stand up against this kind of thing. We just need everybody.
everybody who can to encourage people to support the, their elected politicians and to criticize them when they do wrong.